What's up, y'all? I'm Kyle Alexander. And I'm Michelle Lee. And this is the KM Book Club. <laughs> so finally, we are here to do the review on boundaries. I think this is third time's a charm. Third time is a charm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're finally coming to you guys. Yep. We are excited to do this book, and we told you guys we were going to have a guest speaker. A special guest. Well, it's a guest speaker, special guest speaker. Special <laughs> person speaker of the speaker person. Absolutely. None other than Pastor Jerome Lewis. What's up, my people? <laughs> What's going What's on? What's going on? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Good. Amazing. This is pretty Amazing. awesome. Pretty thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yes, yes. So we're very excited to have you. Um, and just dive straight into this book. Yeah. Before we start, we definitely want to ask you guys to go ahead and like and subscribe and comment, um, share. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think. All if you've that. read the book, let us know what you think. Yep. You on YouTube, on. click the notification. <laughs> all that good stuff. James is going to put it right here. Before we go, PSA. So this is not relationship, relationship advice, advice, marriage counseling. We're not pastors, although we have one today. So actually, so actually, if you do have any if, questions. Yeah, if you need <laughs> counseling advice or relationship <laughs> advice, slide to the right. Oh, or is that to the left, to the right? Just not to me. <laughs> or so let's just dive right on in. Yeah, we've been waiting for this one. Let's do it. I'm really excited. Okay, you guys. So, Pastor, first we want to ask you, why boundaries? How did you find boundaries? Oh, wait. Because okay. you've actually given this book to both of us. Mm -hmm. So this is the one. I think this is the one he gave me. Well, so you've we given me a boundaries book, and you yeah. gave her a boundaries book. So yeah. we kind of wanted to know yeah, why. Well, I, I just uh, know that you guys were in a relationship, and in order for a relationship to be healthy, you need to have healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the book could say it better than me, so I thought if you read it, you could get your own perspective of what boundaries was all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked when you were very intentional with the words that you said when you gave them to me. You said that you wanted me to digest it, mm -hmm. and I was like... Wow, I don't think I've ever digested a book mm -hmm. before. So with those words of intention, I was intentional mm -hmm. about reading it because <clears throat> I really wanted to fully understand why you chose that word to use. Yeah. After you gave it to me, yeah. we actually had a conversation in the car because I, I was a little nervous. <laughs> and I was like, Pastor just gave me a book and it's called Boundaries. <laughs> Do you think he thinks I don't have boundaries? And no, I was like, no. no. Gave that book to me. Calm yeah. down. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I, was like, I had to bring her back from the deep end. I'm so sorry. I was like, do I act like I don't? Like, no, just... no, no, not at all. That wasn't my intention. No. Oh, and yeah, was, <laughs> but even the choice of words about digesting it, because a lot of times, like food in a natural, you can hold stuff in your mouth and spit it out. Right. right. But the things that we digest, those are the things that develop us internally. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to develop a relationship, it starts from the inside, way before on the outside the relationship is developed. So Thank that's you. why I intentionally use those words about digesting it. It was good. <laughs> it was good. I was like, digest, yeah. digest the book. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I came to, you know, just uh, really stumbled up on the book. I'm always looking for new things to read that's kind of pushing me to another level. Okay. And I'm always looking to explore, explore things that are going to help me to go there. Mm -hmm. Boundaries was very important to me and even my wife and I and being in ministry and knowing that you guys, what you do with your music and things, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you can get so busy that it seems like you have none because, or, or the people around you have none. And in order to stay healthy internally and to stay healthy externally, you need to have boundaries. I agree. Amen. It is definitely yeah. a book worth digesting, you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Expectations versus reality. Yeah. You're just keeping me mm. on my toes today. <laughs> so I'm here. Did this whole work. Uh, he did. <laughs> so as far as expectation versus reality, what was your expectation of the book when Pastor gave it to you? So when when you first gave me this book, you've given me a lot of books. <laughs> um, I didn't read it. You gave me another book, another book that we read by T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all will see that review soon. Soon. And I hadn't read that one. You gave me a book in 2008, and I never read it, but she and I ended up reading it together. And this was another book you gave me, and I didn't read it. And I, it was a, honestly, it was like a thick book. And I was like, I don't want to read this long <laughs> book. And the funny thing is, shortly after you gave it to her, we started reading a book every single month. Yeah. So I was like, well, 
you got to dive into it. And you had given us both the book. So it's like, well, let's let's kind of dig into it. Mm -hmm. So my expectations were that, honestly, I thought it was a book about sex. Yeah. When you first gave it to me, I'm yeah, like, yeah. it's probably boundaries. Don't cross this line. Don't cross that. But it's literally, I guess the reality of it is it's boundaries about everything. 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 And you realize so many areas in your life where you need boundaries that you don't have them. Right. Like boundaries of work, relationships, your time. Mm -hmm. And then I think the thing that was great, it talked about like boundaries with yourself. Right. And that was one of the things that I did not know I needed until I read it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And once I read it, I was like, wow, I didn't know that I needed to almost put myself on a time limit with certain things. And right. I thought that was, that was really powerful. Right. How about you, Pastor? Well, when I read the book, I just know that being in ministry for me and being married, um, I realized that I needed to have boundaries with my wife. And I have real dear friends. I realized that uh, I didn't have any boundaries when it came down to how accessible they were to me at the expense of me being frustrated and not doing, being able to do what I wanted to do. And so I had to put those boundaries in place. And once I started putting them in place, it actually helped my relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. Because uh, now I feel like I have time for me to do some things I enjoy. Because sometimes you can always put yourself on the back burner and get lost in helping everyone else because you have no boundaries and meeting their needs. But what about yourself? Right. Uh, I guess you look at the book differently because you mm -hmm. are married. Mm -hmm. And I was I was actually looking in the back and we were talking, you mm -hmm. also told me about another book that they have called mm -hmm. Boundaries for Leaders. They have different series of books and this one does too. So they have boundaries for marriage, mm -hmm. boundaries uh, with kids, mm -hmm. um, boundaries in dating. So this is another one of those books where if, you're, if you wanna pinpoint something specific um, to read or target, they have like, yeah. different mm -hmm. versions of the book so I thought that was pretty cool mm -hmm. um, as far as my expectation versus reality I told you I was nervous <laughs> I was when you gave it to me I was like oh no <laughs> she teared up and everything I did because oh I was like wow. oh my god wow. Wow. um pastor doesn't think I have morals <laughs> I was like you sing in every choir. I think he would have like, yeah, like told you if he didn't think he, he was a wild child. I know. I don't know. I thought like the absolute worst. So, yeah, yeah. but after I read it, like Kyle was saying, it literally talks about boundaries for everything. Yeah. And yeah. I never thought about boundaries outside of dating in a relationship. Um, you know, dating with intention until I read this book and it, pointed out so many different areas where I lacked boundaries. Yeah, yeah. Where I was like, oh my God, that's yeah. pretty bad. Highlights for me were the different areas that it covered. Mm -hmm. Family, work, relationships, God, yourself. Those were my main highlights, just because I can take a, like a segment of my life, whether it's my music, whether it's my job, whether it's our relationship or friendships, and you can kind of learn how to put a boundary on it based on what the book is telling you to do. Right. And then you can see how you didn't have boundaries with certain areas. I know for me, it's such a small boundary, but leaving church at a certain time mm -hmm. was a boundary that I didn't have. So I don't want to, you to take that out of context. Sometimes right, right, it's right. good to stay and good up. to connect okay. with people. <laughs> but sometimes you can, you have something to do and you just waste time for lack of a better word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like if you have something to do and like after and we're like super busy on Sundays for some reason, yeah. we'll stay at church until like two and need to be somewhere by two thirty and end up late. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's silly. Right. Right. So I think the boundary that I learned to put in was with my time there. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, well, five minutes here, five minutes there, five minutes here, time to go. Mm -hmm. If there was a low light for me, it's probably on us and how we like picked up and put down, picked up and put down. Mm -hmm. So this book was the book. We were like up, walking around in circles. Mm -hmm. I can't, like a pastor, one pastor talked mm -hmm. about how he was trying to force himself to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. So he like sits on the edge of the tub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the kind of mindset that yeah. we had reading yeah. this. Yeah. Like we were like, okay, we're falling asleep reading this book. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get up. We were walking around mm -hmm. in the living room reading the book. Literally. Doing walking, laps around. Doing yeah, yeah, yeah. Reading it. So around. I think the yeah. low light was like, we probably could have kind of, I guess, dedicated ourselves a little more at the time reading the book. Mm -hmm. But once we hit like a certain point in the book, it just picked up. 
yeah. and got yeah. really, really good. The highlight for me was uh, taking boundaries and seeing how it was applicable to my life. And one of the boundaries for me is getting my rest. Mm. I'm the type of person that would stay up till like three o'clock in the morning studying. Oh my goodness. And uh, I had to put boundaries in place because I would stay up late and then I would sleep in because I was up till three or four o'clock in the morning. Wow. And so I had to put a boundary in place and say, I'm going to bed at 12 o'clock. And uh, the other boundary for me, these were highlights because it made me take what I read and look at some of the stories and say, okay, how can I apply this to me? Mm -hmm. I had to put boundaries in when it came down to my diet. Yeah. At one time I was 255 pounds. Wow. And I had to put some boundaries in place. I just ate because, you know, it was there. I figured, you know, I was raised, Listen. clean your plate. I <laughs> ate the plate if it was eatable, you know. So I had to, you know, uh, put some boundaries in place when it came down to my diet. Mm. Because if I'm going to do what God has for me, I've got to be healthy. Right. And I can't be healthy digging my grave with my teeth. Right. Any low lights? No, not like really. God. Not really. I, like um, I, I almost ran into what you guys ran into, mm. with, you know. But I've learned to... What I, when I said to you about the book, mm -hmm. digest it. I am not trying to see how much territory I can cover. I'm seeing how much I can bite off and digest. Okay. And sometimes in order to get the maximum out of something, you have to take bite sizes mm -hmm. and then walk away from it, right. digest it, and then come back and get some more. Yeah. And so that's what I had to do. I had, it took me a longer read than most books because I wasn't trying to finish it. I was trying to digest it. Right. Highlights for me. I started reading this before you and I even created the book club because once you gave it to me, mm -hmm. I started reading it. And That's we were cool. actually reading <laughs> some... The weight. We were reading mm -hmm. the weight, mm -hmm. but I was reading this by myself. I picked it up and the first chapter grabbed my attention so much because it's literally a story and it, it's it's called the first chapter is a day in a boundaryless life yeah. and when i tell you it was jaw dropping for me because i was like this is my life i was thinking did you think that was you it was like this is completely <laughs> and it's literally it's just a woman that's going through her day from the time she wakes up to the time she goes to sleep and it's the little nuances that's like yeah. wow that happens all the time where you get frustrated with yourself. Yeah. You honestly, at first, point the finger and get frustrated at other people. Like, why are you putting this on me at right. work? Or, mm -hmm. you know, why is this not working out? And getting frustrated and it's like, well, no, point the finger back at you because mm -hmm. you had the opportunity. You're in control of saying, hey, you know, no, I'm not gonna do that. Or put it, like you said, put a time limit. Right. So the first chapter, I was just like, I think that was the moment that I read the first chapter and then had to put it down and was like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. <laughs> like, this is about a, about to be a whole thing. Mm -hmm. It literally breaks it down into minutes, you guys. Like, mm -hmm. the time. Each minute of her day. And I'm, I just resonated with that whole chapter. Low lights. There were certain points, and again, it, it was probably because we... we Put it down and like boundaries is literally probably one of the reasons why we have dry because <laughs> oh, <the> <laughs> they're <laughs> in the ratings because right. yeah. it was like oh man Truth is, I'm tired. how many more pages do we have yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> even though it was a good book like i honestly referred back to it yeah uh, yep. a couple weeks ago okay with hair i also do hair on the side, you know. Fortunately, it's picking up and I have mm -hmm. a lot of new clients, consistent clients. Yeah, yeah. I started finding myself trying to fit new clients in every moment of my week. Mm -hmm. And it was becoming like, okay, I'm gonna go to work and then I'm gonna come straight to you. And then Tuesday, well, I'm gonna go to a choir rehearsal after work and then I'm gonna come to you. Or maybe I can try to figure it out after church or before we go to, and then I'm looking at my schedule and I'm like, I'm getting home, dumb late. Mm -hmm. And to your point, it is something that improves you. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you approach it with the intent of, I'm gonna come out better right. as a result of this, then it makes you wanna grab a hold of it. Yeah. Right. Because you know it's gonna impact you in a positive way. Right, yeah. right. That's really good. I have a question yeah. for you. Can you tell me how, in certain areas, not having boundaries has hindered? Well, in my relationship with my wife, mm -hmm. 
I'm the type of person that likes to help people. Right. I always want to fix problems or help people. And sometimes in the busyness of not having boundaries, mm -hmm. it's cut into our time together. And it made her feel like she wasn't the priority, other people were. Right. And so I had to learn the art of saying no. That's how it impacted me is that when you allow other people to have more of your time than the main person in your life, mm -hmm. then those lack of boundaries will impact your your most valuable relationship. Well, sometimes you have to tell people, no, that's a boundary. Yeah, It's like a stop sign. A stop mm -hmm. sign is a boundary. Don't go past this because if you do, you're going to cause an accident. Right. Boundaries, I like to think in terms of like guard guardrails. Mm -hmm. If you cross the guardrail, you're gonna have an accident. Right. You're gonna go into somebody else's lane. Yeah. yeah. I guess kinda of to piggyback off of that mm -hmm. and to finish the whole situation with hair, like mm -hmm. I just allotted a day and it was like Mondays will be the day I do hair. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And at first it was really difficult. It's still look because it's still new. Like that's I Monday literally too. Yeah. Listen, listen. <laughs> I was like, huh, I could just go ahead and, you know, try to figure something out. So, to mm -hmm. that, I mm -hmm. guess I'll, I'll actually go to another question. Yeah. When you have your boundary set in place, like you have your bedtime boundary mm -hmm. set in place for 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now, every night, there might, uh, something might come up where it's like, okay, like I'm going to be beyond. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go beyond midnight. So, mm -hmm. how do you determine, okay, this is okay, I can go ahead and and cross this boundary. But at what point are you, do you kind of look at it and say like, this is becoming a habit? Well, what I was about to say is I don't let it become a habit. Okay. When I first started in ministry, I used to counsel people Monday through Friday. Okay. I did it week after week after week, and I became exhausted. Mm -hmm. And when I became exhausted, then my fuse became short. I started snapping and I was snapping on people closest to me. And they brought it to my attention. I said, I'm just exhausted. And so I had to put boundaries in place. It made a lot of people upset, but if I hadn't have put that in place, I wouldn't have been good to anyone. Much like with your hair, you have to balance out what has the greatest value, you or money. You, the people, mm -hmm. or your spouse. And so the greatest value to me is my family. So I can't exchange that for anything. And if I don't put boundaries in place, the thing that I love, the people I love are gonna hate. Mm -hmm. And when I made the changes, it's like my family and myself, we've been re-energized because I feel like I have something to give them that's fresh. Yeah. Right. So would you say an identifier of being boundaryless or needing to reevaluate your boundaries would be you know, short temper, exhaustion, or exhausted. Sometimes you have to uh, do an assessment. If you want honesty, you've got to be prepared to handle it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I ask my kids, I ask my wife, and they say we don't have other people have more time than we do. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, that's got to change. Right. I'd rather people be mad at me than my family. Right. And I've got to be comfortable with that. And guess what? I'm good with that. Yeah. I put boundaries in place on what I let people say to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people feel like because of familiarity, especially with friends, they can give you a piece of their mind, they can say whatever they want. No, you can't. And respectfully, I'll, I'll, I'll check you. We have to understand, we teach people how to treat us. Right. Right. Based on the permission we give them. Right. And that permission we give them is either we have a boundary or we don't. So when people are treating you a certain way, you have to ask yourself, don't get mad at them, ask yourself. Did I give them permission? And here's permission. Call me anytime you want. Anytime you need me, I'll be there. You know what you just told them? <laughs> you don't have no boundaries. Right. Right. And so when they call you at 2 o'clock in the morning and you got to get up to go to work, you can't get mad at them because you gave them permission. Right. Right. I'm always there for you. I don't say that. Right. I'll be there when you need me if I can. <laughs> if because, I can. <laughs> because, because if you don't put if those boundaries in place, you're teaching people how to treat you. It's even with my kids. I have to put boundaries in place with them. I'll give them money, but I'm not the bank. Right. So that means you have to tell people no. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them I'm not doing it. And that's why I'm very careful on when and how I give my word, because that's a reflection of my character. Mm -hmm. And my character is the thing that defines who I am. Wow. <laughs>
But, okay. that, but it's, important, it's important when it comes down to relationships and when it comes down to your craft yeah. that you put boundaries in place. There are times I have to close my Bible and go to bed. There are times I have to close my Bible and lay in bed with my wife. I don't stay in my office and study. She say, hey, honey, I'm waiting for it. I close that Bible. <laughs> but you got to put boundaries in place. Cause the I'll be back, Jesus. Yes, yes. <laughs> you could spend all day in the studio. Right. And you can be doing what you love, but hurting the people that love you. Right. Yeah. You got to put boundaries in place. Would you say that it's more difficult to, I guess, anything would be easier to set a boundary prior to so it's mm -hmm. set up from mm -hmm. the gate but when you have those moments where there wasn't a boundary before and now you're trying to set a boundary in place um mm -hmm. clearly that's more difficult mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. how do you address that with people like mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. for instance they talk about like you know people at work mm -hmm. or people in relationships or even your kids like mm -hmm. how do, we don't have kids so yeah yeah, this is yeah, yeah all yeah. you on yeah. that one but well, if it's not if it's not a life and death situation i'll get back to you see i don't let people's fire become mine mm -hmm. Mm. and sometimes people will try to make their emergency your emergency right and they'll come to you and put immediate pressure on you i need you to give me a ride right now because my car broke down mm -hmm. i can't allow my prior commitments to come under the pressure of your emergency I'm very careful with saying I will do. Let me check my schedule, and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Because they, it might seem like an emergency to you, mm -hmm. but most of the time it's not an emergency to other people. Right. right. The scripture says in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart in all of your ways acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Then I need to talk to God before I talk to you. Right. And God set up boundaries in the garden. Right. When he told Adam not to touch that tree, he was saying, Adam, I'm giving you a boundary. Mm. When he crossed over the line, he lost the thing he had. Mm. Wow. Because when he crossed the line and ate of the tree, he lost his access to the garden. And how many times do we cross over boundary lines and we lose access to something that God gave us? Right. you got to establish some property lines in your relationship. And when friends try to cross that property line, hey, you trespass it. Mm. you got to back up. Right. I didn't ask you to come in the gate. You're right. But that's how you have to be with your relationship. Right. You got to put those property lines that you can't allow people to say things to her. You can't allow girls to say things to him because you have property lines. A level of responsibility. All right. I think we can go into the rating system, you guys. <laughs> Woo this is how the rating system goes. Uh, we have... It's from one to five, one being the lowest and five being the highest. Yeah. One being dry, two being barely, three being basic king, four being <laughs> lucked up, and five is change your life. <laughs> right now, <laughs> you are so crazy. Come on, my dear. Yeah, so we write them down, and then on three, we all turn okay. around. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys. One, two, three. Oh! What you got? Oh! Hey. Check us out! Yeah, I'm, taking, I'm taking it to another level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Master, why did you give it a five? Because it will change your life. It's changed my life. I've lost uh, 30 some pounds, and me and my wife is like we've been married coming up for 36 years. I feel like I'm still in my honeymoon. You so know? you gotta do it faster. So, so you know what? You gotta do change your, change your life. Change your life. Change your life. What's up? <laughs> I ain't got no shame in it, man. I think that sometimes we get frustrated with people that we've given permission. Right. To have an all access behind stage pass. Yeah. And then we wonder why they show up. We wonder why they say things we didn't ask for because we give them permission. Right. Yeah. And you can change that. Just tell them, you know what, I respectfully uh, just ask you to uh, not say that. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a past, but they don't know what my future looks like. Right. And that's the thing that has the greatest amount of light, not my past. Right. And I, tell, I was telling someone this past week, see, there's a reason why the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield. I think even with boundaries you also have to have like a ridiculous amount of patience mm -hmm. when you're setting a boundary in place mm -hmm. and let's say someone or something or even yourself can't fully discipline or you know discipline yourself enough to say time to go to bed it's mm -hmm. becoming a habit 
get back to your schedule or you know you're telling someone something and it's it they're saying like okay mm -hmm. but then then it falls back into the habit and then it's like nah, nah, nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it falls back and it's mm -hmm. like you don't want to get irritated with yourself or irritated at that person yeah it does require patience for sure so you, mm -hmm. yeah, it requires a lot of patience yeah if you're not patient with yourself you're not gonna be patient with other people true patience is an indicator that it's going to take time. But if it's going to take time, you got to know when you're going to start. I mean, you went to the gym and you go to the gym and right. you become a buff brother right now. And uh, <laughs> that didn't happen over 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 a short period of time. Right. There were some things you had to change. Right. There were some disciplines you had to put in place. Yeah. And there was some pain you went through. But after a while, the pain subsides mm -hmm. and the results start to show. Right. And when the results start to show, that's motivation to keep going because these are the type of results I'm working for. Right? Mm -hmm. Patience is very important, but understand that that's over time. And sometimes when it comes down to putting boundaries in place with people and even with yourself, you can't get so frustrated and try to get results like a drive through It doesn't happen like mm. that. There's a difference between cutting something to change it and untying something yeah. to change it. And sometimes when you're working on you, you need to gradually untie some things. Mm -hmm. And when you untie something, it, it requires a degree of delicacy. Mm -hmm. That you have to be very delicate so that you don't break it. Right. Yeah. That was good. Mm -hmm. Some things you gotta cut and some things you gotta untie. untie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so why did you pick what? Lucked Up? I chose Lucked Up, <clears throat> one, because of course, this wasn't a book I was looking for. This was a book that was mm -hmm. given to me. I wasn't expecting it to cover everything, like an entire lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything that you encounter even internally again like I, I never knew that you could you needed boundaries outside of a relationship yeah. or I guess you I guess you you know it but you I would have never mm -hmm. defined it as a boundary right. some things I'm good at boundaries on that mm -hmm. um, but some things I was like dang I completely missed the mark yeah. what it, it did is it stretch you Michelle yeah. yeah and when you're pregnant with a dream you can't be pregnant with a dream without stretch marks. Because mm -hmm. you're carrying a baby. Right. I'm talking about a spiritual dream. Yeah. The books that we read, they stretch here right. mm -hmm. before this can stretch. Mm -hmm. So you don't expand in your thinking. You're never going to expand in your vision. It exposes you. Exposure equals expansion. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the more you're exposed to a different way of thinking, now you can think like the people do that's on the top. Why did you choose like that? So originally I was gonna give this book a one because <laughs> I would beat you. If the funny thing is, every time, every we, time talked we talked about, about it, it like when we finish one, the book, dry, dry, dry meal. Yeah. Some books you read will be a happy meal. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. We but had some. Yeah, yeah. 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 But other books will be spinach, broccoli, and cauliflower. Yep. This was that. So originally I was gonna give it a one. I gave it a lucked up because I didn't realize how much it was going to impact me. Um, and one thing I can say to you, Pastor, mm -hmm. um, I remember at a certain point in my life, I used to call Pastor all the time. Mm -hmm. Every time the wind blew him, I was like, <gasps> Pastor! And, and, what I, and what I realized <laughs> is that I was almost like codependent in, at a sense. Yeah. But it was like, yeah. oh, this happened. Let me call Pastor. This happened. Let me call. I was like, you know what? How am I growing if every time I have an issue, I turn to pastor. But you know what, don't think about it like this. That's not a negative, because when you're going through therapy, you need a therapist. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about codependency and going through what you're going through, a person who is no longer codependent, first before they get to that place of being free, mm -hmm. first they get counseling through a therapist. So I understand the process. Yeah. Now, if you were still doing that, right. Then we have a problem. Then we have a problem. Because mm -hmm. you know I would be violating your boundary now. Well, but at the same time, my therapy ain't working. Right. See, the design oh, of therapy is not to keep you codependent on the therapist. Right. Mm -hmm. It's designed to keep you, get you free of it, so now you can go and help somebody else. Right. And that's where you come to. And I think, as, as you being a pastor, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. by you putting, and, and you didn't even say to me, mm -hmm. this is my boundary, mm -hmm. I think I just kind of stepped back and thought about it. I was like, well, he has his kids, he has his family, he has his wife, back up. Depend on God because mm -hmm. God's not going to let you fall, mm -hmm. and God is more reliable than Pastor. Absolutely. Cast all your care, like mm -hmm. lean on God, and so mm -hmm. I did, and in that I saw a whole lot of growth. Right. So now when Pastor and I have conversations, I can essentially give him highlights and lowlights. Hey, right. this happened. I did great here. Yeah. Hey, this happened. I did. Rather than like, right. Pastor, help. help me through it. I guess for me myself, I was like, you know what, Kyle, put this boundary in place 
because this relationship isn't going anywhere. Pastor's mm-hmm. known me my whole life. He's going to mm-hmm. always be there. Mm-hmm. I look at Pastor as a teacher. The best thing for a teacher is to see that the student yeah. is not only applying what you taught, but is learning and growing from it. So it's like, right. Pastor, I've grown in this area. I've grown in that area. I've done this. I've done that. Mm-hmm. I'm doing these things mm-hmm. based on what I was taught. It's like flying a plane, man. I'm the pilot of the plane. Mm-hmm. You was in the passenger seat first class. Right. But then there comes a time that you come and sit in the cockpit with me. Right. But then there comes a time I get off the plane and you fly. Right. Ooh. And those are the, 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 the progressive steps that you walk through. Yeah. You might have been a passenger. Now you're sitting, not the pilot, but in the cockpit watching how I fly. Right. Mm-hmm. And then there comes a period of time that I see the growth and the trust that I don't have to fly the plane no more. Now right. you fly. Right. Now sometimes you might need some landing skills. <laughs> right. Oh you yeah. Know yeah. I mean? You know, like, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, uh, you're learning now how right. to deal with the turbulence. Right. Mm-hmm. You're learning how to fly by the instruments instead of by sight. Right. You know, all those things. You're learning the power of lifting up yourself right. when it, when they, when people want to keep you grounded. Right. It's just like trying to play. Oh, yeah. This was definitely a surprise. Hey, James, this is going to be the easiest edit. Let the video <laughs> run and keep it off. Let that thing run. You look at uh, the life of, of, of someone who didn't have any boundaries in the Bible. Sansa. Mm. Oh. Wow. When it, came to, when, it came yeah, to, when it came down to relationships, he had no boundaries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as a result, he lost vision. Right. Literally lost vision. Wow. His eyes were put out. Right. And he never fulfilled his purpose. And he never fulfilled his purpose because he had no boundaries. Yeah. It's imperative to oh. have boundaries. You see it throughout the scriptures, but we don't call it boundaries in the scriptures. And I think it says in Corinthians, it says, be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Right. That's boundaries. Right. Don't eat of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That's boundaries. So not having boundaries can cost your purpose. It can cost you your purpose. It can cost you to lose your eyes. It can cost you to lose your, your the wealth that you have. Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden. The word Eden means the Garden of Delight. So you can be in a delightful place mm-hmm. and then not have any boundaries. And now you're no longer in a delightful place. Right. I ain't gonna read nothing. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead and pick this book up. If you this know? is something that you struggle with mm-hmm. or because it's a, it's a lot, you guys. When I say it goes through, I'm gonna just give you guys <laughs> spill off some of the topics. Some of the topics. It has clearly the, the boundaries with your family. If you have boundary conflicts with your family, give me an friends, example of that. Family. Because I can give you an example of everything in there. I have one. Okay. Oh, we about the we about the TDJ this. Yeah. Go ahead. You tell me the topic, and I'll give you a boundary where you should have it in place. Okay. Family. Don't give them your money. Friends. Friends. Don't tell them everything. Mm. Spouse. Your spouse. Make sure you give them their time, and you have yours. Spouse. Spouse again. You just Just say it again. again. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure they have their time, and you have yours. Children. Children. Don't give them all your money. Put work. All, put your, with work, mm-hmm. make sure you work your schedule and don't always work overtime or feel like you have to always be there early. Yourself. Yourself. If you don't take care of your health, you're not going to be any good to anybody. Boundaries mm-hmm. and God. Make sure you have time with him, that he's the priority. If God is not the priority, then you're probably an idol worship. Because you, you got something else in this place, and that's an idol. Yeah. So you guys... I'm Go pick this book up. <laughs> Even if you're not sure of if you want to read it or not, just read the first chapter. Yep. And if anything sticks out <clears throat> as far as, oh, that sounds like me, or anything connects with your daily routine, just keep reading. Yeah. I promise this book is definitely something Absolutely. worth digesting. Yeah. And everybody has boundary areas in, in their life that they can be working on, yeah. so whether you realize it or not. Absolutely right. That was Boundaries. We gave you guys highlights, lowlights. A word from we, the pastor. The entire word. <laughs> and the lightning we round with pastor. Jake slash Stephen Furtick this. The lightning round. The, the freestyle lightning session round. with pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys have a book for us to review, uh, definitely shoot us an email at watchkmbc at gmail.com. Make sure it fits the five categories. Yeah, which we'll give you. Yeah. <laughs>you don't remember all of us we'll give them to you and make sure you read the book first don't recommend a book that you ain't read but again make sure you like subscribe comment share if you're in the newcastle area definitely 
come worship with us on Wednesday nights for Bible study, which prayer starts at 7, mm -hmm. and our power is from 7.30 to 8.30, and Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 10.30 services. And what's the address? 8 828 Frenchtown Road, Newcastle, Delaware. Telephone yes, number 302-324-8050. That's it. Yeah, oh my God, I'm like, want to talk more. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to thank you guys for having me. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. For tuning in and watching. And we will, oh, what's the next book we're doing? The <laughs> next book we're covering is Waiting and Dating. By Miles Monroe. So definitely stay tuned. Yep. Get the book. If you read it already, let us know what you think. Yep. And we will talk to you later. All right, y'all. I'm Kyle Alexander. And I'm Michelle Lee. Peace. Out. Wait, and this is Pastor. <laughs> and Pastor. What you say. This is Pastor Jay. All right. Bless you. Peace, y'all. Thanks, guys. <laughs>